Hello everyone. This video we're going to learn how to correctly install a PTZ camera and all we need to know about it. So the PTZ camera is a very practical device, sometimes for surveillance purposes, but we're not going to see it much in residential areas because of the cost. It's a very, very high-tech device, so it costs a little bit more than regular surveillance cameras. So we'll be seeing it more in commercial areas, such as like shopping malls or airports, where we have to cover much ground. This half sphere, when we install it, they can cover half a sphere of area, so it's really good surveillance purposes. And when we install it, the first two things we need to figure out is the power. So there are two big kinds of PTZ cameras. They, we divide it on how they receive the power. One is a non-PoE PTZ camera, one is a PoE PTZ camera. The non-PoE PTZ camera relies an outside, an outside power cord. We'll then connect to our alternating current and then it'll receive the power for it to function. This has some low distance restrictions because sometimes we can't really find the proper perfect power supply. And then it's the PoE PTC camera. The PoE PTC camera is kind of more have higher mobility because all we need is one single Ethernet cable and this Ethernet cable can stretch in a limit, but it's a stretch in a lot of places and we don't have to worry about the power source being close to the PTZ camera. Although when it comes to the PoE, PoE, so PoE PTZ cameras, we have to make sure that the remaining power to the PTZ camera ma uh, is minimum power consumption. Say we sometimes because of the distance or the power supply equipment cannot provide enough power, the PTZ camera will turn on at all. So there are usually two power supply equipments which used for the PDZ camera. One is the PoE switch, the other is the PoE injector. The PoE switch is just a regular switch with PoE features integrated. Some of it, it will output high power for the PTZ cameras and also can receive the data for it. And mostly when saying we have an existing internet network and we don't want to you know, add a new switch inside, in this case we can use a PoE injector. It's a really simple device, we don't need to like tear down our old setups. All we have to do is plant this between the camera and the data provider. So first in the SLAM port, connects to the main network, receives the data and then it will power up and then inject power to the Ethernet cable and send it along with the data to the camera. It's really simple so it can save us a lot of energy when we're trying to you know, set up a PTZ camera on an existing network. Although we have to notice that the power injector or the PoE switch, they all have to comply with the IEEE 802.3 AT protocol. This one uh, releases higher power at the at the ports and will provide up at least 30 watts that is enough for a PTZ camera to function and some PTZ cameras will require more up to like 60 watts it really depends on the model of make of your PTZ camera after figuring out the power supply for the PTZ camera then we have to figure out the location well PTZ cameras they're installed upside down and mostly we put them in roofs, walls, or a, a pole outside and go up high. And then it comes to altitude. We would like the PTZ cameras to be installed as high as they can. If they go high enough, they can cover more ground because of the pan tilt zoom feature. They can cover a lot of ground by zooming in and out, tilting up and down, and paneling around the panel. And then it would be the environment. If we're, 
planting the PDZ camera inside. We don't have to worry much. Just make sure it's, prote it's protected. There won't be anything that would harm it. If we're considering to deploy the PDZ camera outside, outdoor, we're gonna have to work, uh, make sure that the waterproof measurements reach at least IP66, like our fast cabling PTZ camera. And then also a metal housing will help it release its heat when it's running on full capacity. When it's overheated, the, dam the components will sometimes break and we're gonna have to you know, fix it, man. It will be a lot of trouble. Okay, that's pretty much some basics you need to work, uh, know about when you're installing a PTZ camera. If you have any more questions about how to install the PTZ camera, you can leave them at the section below and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.